Hello, enchanted ones. What if I told you that this table wasn't made of wood? In fact, what if I told you that this table wasn't even a table? That it was a cat bed? Keep watching to see how I made this. I have recently brought my beautiful cat Charlie to my new home and I have enjoyed his company so, so much. He means the world to me and he is so happy here. When he arrived here, I brought him this new cat bed and so far he seems to be you afraid of it. I've tried to lure him in with yeah. cat treats, but this hasn't worked either. So I have come to the conclusion that it is just not that exciting for him to look at. It needs character, just like him. Charlie loves being outside in nature, just like me. And because of its lack of character, I wanted to give it a little makeover. So I decided that this was going to be a cat bed straight out of the forest. I was somehow going to turn this into this. So I experimented with a few ideas and gathered inspiration from a few tree stumps I came across on my walk. It quickly became apparent that each one was so different and unique in character. There were stubs with many roots, some with none, and ones covered in moss and ivy. After I got home, I conjured up a plan with how I was going to tackle this. And with my research and plan complete, I got on with the task in hand. The first step was breaking up a few cardboard boxes to act as my base. I firstly wrapped a split box around the base and then integrated two panels at the front that curved around the hole. I then sellotaped around the base to ensure everything was smooth and ready for the next step. I also made a lid. Do not worry if it doesn't look circular yet. Overall, I made sure the structure was a little bigger than the base and that it wasn't too tight. I wanted to be able to remove it if I fancied a change. Now I had the perfect case around the base structure that was taped up and secure. It was time for the next step, creating the shape. For this, I used newspaper and sellotape. I wanted to create ridges around the outside of my trunk so I rolled up single sheets of newspaper, turning them into half moon shapes by pressing them into the stump and securing them with plenty of sellotape. I repeated this around the trunk, altering the shape of each ridge, some thick, some thin, some slightly curved and crunched, just to give it an authentic, realistic look. Because remember, the beauty of creating the perfect tree is that it is not perfect. Its beauty lies in its quirky, unpredictable nature. Then I worked on the opening of the structure. I outlined the hole in the newspaper and I mimicked similar ridges above and below the hole to create flow in the bark. After this was complete, I then cut out crescent moon shaped pieces of the cardboard to attach at the top of the newspaper. This created a lovely smooth sturdy surface on top. After I completed the general shape of the structure, it was time to harden the exterior. For this I used paper mache. To make paper mache you will need white glue, water, an old container and tissue paper. I created the glue by mixing two parts white glue with one part water. I ripped up small pieces of tissue paper and then glued layers all over the structure. 
Make sure you get in all the little crevices and that you cover all of the sellotape as it will be very difficult to paint later on otherwise. The tissue paper will make your structure more solidified but also it will give it a lovely bark texture that will come to life when you paint it later on. Of course, do not forget the bottom or the top. Everything needs to be covered and hardened. In total, I glued three layers. This process may take a long time, but persevere because eventually you will get less of a cardboard cutout covered in newspaper, but what looks like a rather beautiful white silhouette of a tree stump. Once you are happy and that you can firmly touch your structure without it denting, it is finally time for your last step, painting. I wanted the stump to blend in with the aesthetic of my lounge, so I used my wooden floor as a colour palette for this. I experimented with creating the colour for the trunk and worked out that my floor had an undertone of blue. This created a slightly cool tone feel. After deciding on the main colour, I painted the surface of the stump a slightly lighter variation of this by adding white and the base a darker version by adding black. Next, I added detail to the bark. I wanted to create depth in the wood. I did this by painting a darker tone in the crevices and then blended this out. I then added texture by making swift movements with a large brush and highlighted the middle and the top of the curves with lighter tones. I then turned my attention to the top of the stump, using a picture as a rough guide. After doing some research with the design, I found out that a tree's rings can vary in colour due to the seasons, dark being summer and light being spring. The circles can also vary in how far they are pushed out due to slow and fast growing periods the tree may have. So you can make a little story behind your tree's life circle as you paint it. I drew circle after circle, varying the tones. But remember, the beauty with painting trees is that you do not have to do anything perfect. In fact, the less imperfect you create it, the more realistic it will be. Each tree is totally different. Finally, I added a few final details to make my tree unique. I also gave it a white wash just to blend some harsh tone variation colours together. And for the moment of truth, I placed my finished tree stump back on top of the cat bed. Here is the finished result. I hope you enjoy. I was so thrilled with the outcome of my tree stump cat bed. It looks so good outside. It blended in with its surroundings perfectly. But does it look good inside? Yes, I was so happy with how well the colours blended with my decor. And Charlie, well, it took a little convincing, but after a few days, I finally got this one picture of Charlie in his new home. But the great thing is, it is not only a cat bed, 
It could be a stool. Or this. Or turned around a beautiful little table. The perfect chance to have a lovely cup of tea within nature. Either way, Charlie enjoys it, and so do I. I hope you have enjoyed this video, Enchanted Ones, and I hope you too find ways to entertain your animals and pets at home. Please let me know in the comments down below. All my love, Arlowen.